Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart. I don't know whether you recognise that piece. It's a little known piece, actually, but it's by Franz Liszt, and it's called La Cloche Son, The Bell Rings. And I'm going to use it as an example of intermediate repertoire and continuing the theme that I was on last week about how important it is as teachers for us to analyse the music before we start to teach it. First of all, I'm going to apologise if my screen is back to front again. Facebook have gone and changed the, uh, the, the way that you set this up and I couldn't just work it out in time to come on and do this. So I'll sort it out. If I'm backwards, I promise I'll sort it for next week. So La Cloche Son. It's an intermediate level piece. Um, it's about grade four. In fact, it's, a, it's on the ABRSM grade four alternatives list. I think it's a little gem um, considering that it's so, so... Um, underknown. Liszt is obviously well known for using bells in his pieces and this is what we've got here, La Cloche Son, the bell rings. And you can hear it, can't you, right from the start with that lovely open fifth. And as for where the beat is, well goodness knows, we'll come back to that in a minute. He based this melody on a French folk song and there are two clear uh, parts to this. You've got this section, which I'll call section A, and that is repeated twice with just a little change at the end of the phrase. And then the second section is interesting, the B section, because it really goes on with new material and a change of time signature as well. he repeats that not once not twice but he plays that little melody three times before he then goes back and the very last few bars and repeats the opening back into three four so you could say that the piece is a b and a tiny a at the very end french folk song Written in about 1850, we think, while he was at Weimar, and clearly programmatic. It's a beautiful piece, I think, to introduce Liszt, this idea of romantic miniatures to your pupils, because it really does um, get their imagination going. Other things you need to know before you start to teach the piece. Uh, the key signature is um, three flats. Clearly, it's in a minor key so it's C is the is the tonic minor it's mostly aeolian it's mostly aeolian so it has B flats yeah with one exception just towards the end there are two bars let me just play so this is in the B section and then here it brightens for a moment into the dominant and then here it is again this lovely chord yeah so that's the flat and supertonic yeah so it's called two in the key of c minor which should be d n a and he's gone d flat f and e also known as the neapolitan six and used for great emotional intensity so have a listen to that again the whole thing. Um, so what else to say about it? We've looked at the, 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 the structure of it, we've looked a little bit at the harmony and the scale, the key. Um, lots of tonic and dominant going on at the beginning, we've got those open fifths setting the scene and of course it's the third of the chord isn't it that gives the chord its character. So only at the end of the third bar do we find out whether it's major or minor. Let's have a listen again. I wonder if you could work out as well which beat of the bar or subdivision it comes in on. There it is. There's the character. That's there's the minor. I wonder what would happen if I'd gone. 
and do that whole thing again for something. And I love things like that, holding the pedal down, listening to the harmonics really build up. Do you work out which beat of the bar it starts on? Actually starts on the second quaver. And the way it's written, you've got a quaver rest and then quaver or eighth notes rest and two and three and tie and two and three and tie. So there is no first beat either until the beginning of bar four. So the whole thing, how do you think that makes it feel? To me, it feels very nebulous. I'm going to use that word. It floats. There is no certainty about this. And I think that's one of the beauties of the piece. I've done this with several adults and they just love that. Uh, they, they love the maturity of the piece. And I think you, your teenagers will as well. It does need a level of maturity to be able to play it because you've got to hold that space at the very beginning. Technically, it's not too demanding, but musically, it is really quite a sophisticated piece, both because of that um, starting on the second quaver, because of the tie at the end, and the way that the left hand then comes in, actually um, on bar three, second quaver, second beat. So a lot of counting has to go on, and you know, the students can sit there going, one, two, or counting six. It doesn't really make any difference, I don't think. Four, five, six. it's lovely just going on to pedal now to keep the pedal down just keep it down until you feel you absolutely have to change and just listen to the resonance major chord and I change it. As I say, I think it's a little gem. And that is Franz Liszt La Cloche Son, intermediate romantic miniature piece. And the, the, the score that I'm reading it from, or the book that I'm reading it from, is one of the lovely Urtext editions uh, from Vienna Urtext edition, Chopin, Liszt and Hiller. Lovely collection of pieces, one of the ones with the orange cover. So I hope that's useful. As I said last week, it's really important to analyse the piece, to know about it, know what some of the pitfalls are before you start to teach it. Doubtless you discover more things along the way, but at least you're on the right road and you can set the student up for success from the beginning. All right, hope that's been helpful. Bye bye for now. Thanks for watching.